Uh, my lords, uh, may I start uh, on behalf of the first and second respondents? You have also 15 minutes. Uh, thank you. Yes. May I start by paying compliments to the registrar of this honorable court, who at very short notice, severe time constraints, has been able, working with the IT experts appointed by this court, to produce two reports, which should be read and seen by your lordships in the context of the limited time. Satisfactory reports. Reports that say the opposite of what the Honorable Orengo is suggesting they say. Although you also have limited time to go through these reports, but I urge you that you go through them and where it is necessary, you compare the information here with the forms 34 A's which have been filed with the court, including forms 34 B. But what you see from this first report, the blue one, that the registrar is complaining. She convened a meeting of the parties at 4 p.m. on the very day that she was told to commence this work. The petitioners did not turn up until 6.30. It's all captured in her report. You will see at page 10, the registrar saying, however, as the process went on, they introduced a new checklist. That's the petition number, which is the modus of parade. Lord, let me make a few points here with regard to this report. One, at the time that the Returning officer for the presidential elections announced the results. He had received all the scanned copies 34B. And let me repeat here that form 34B for each constituency is the aggregate of form. 34 is, copies of which you have here. When you are being asked to hold that the elections were not conducted in accordance with the law, you can only do that by looking at what the law requires with regard to forms 34 B's and 34 A's. But when you look at the regulation 79 2A with regard to forms 34 A and regulation 83 A with regard to form 34 B, you will find that the requirement is for those forms to be signed. And actually the form, the format of the prescribed form, you will see it in the schedule to the regulations. So there is no requirement in the regulations about any security features. So you cannot be asked to disregard the forms because of security features. The regulations are clear as to what should be in the form. No, Lord, you, if, if you turn to page 8, scrutiny of forms 34Bs, it's not paginated, but it's, it's, it's schedule 7 in this blue form, with regard to the constituencies in respect 
of which the forms are said not to have been signed by the returning officers. Five of them, one, two, three, four, five. Five of them. If you look at the column serial number, the form had a serial number. If you look at the next column, watermark, the forms had watermarks. Where it is, the next column is returning officer signed, that is the ones that are not signed. But the next column, agent, you will find they were signed by the agents. Handing over, we've already gone through it because that was under the old regime. Those are the only five forms which were not signed by the returning officer. They had the security features, they had the serial numbers, and you'll be able to see the number of voters in those particular polling stations. In fact, when you compare, you will see that the, the, the majority of them actually voted for the petition. Excuse me, Mr. Muitre. Yes. With regard to what you said about the regulations uh, uh, 79. 79 and 83, yeah. that there were no security features required on these forms? It is not a requirement of the law. It is not a requirement of the law? No. But did these forms have security features? Yes. So meaning, if they had, they all should have? Abundance of caution. Yeah. The commission, out of abundance of caution, yes. are the ones who designed the security features. Okay. Yes. And my Lord, we, we have explanations. It's just that uh, there wasn't any enough time. Because when you scan a copy, you can actually lose some of the security features. But what I'm saying Mr. Mita, before is that the forms 34... Yes. Before you move. Yes, my Lord. Uh, how do you explain Nyali in that form? And the serial number or lack of it? Yes, there is no serial number. That's admitted. What does that mean? If I had time, I would take instructions. But if you go to the next column, my lord, yes. it says it is signed by two agents, ODM and Jubilee. So that the next question, my lord, why were the agents of ODM and Jubilee signing the form for Nyali? So, they are signed. Is it reasonable to expect a party who has signed a form to come here and disown the form? Look, the simple point submission I'm making here is that the forms 34B were in position of the national returning officer for the presidential vote and he was perfectly right in declaring the third respondent duly elected. My Lord, with regard to the forms about access, again, when you read this report on IT, on access to the system, you will find that in terms of paragraph 72 of your ruling, we availed all the orders of this code, the items that we are asked to avail, you will see that we availed them. We even gave a soft copy of the logs, which the petitioner did not want to take. And my Lord, we set up the link, passwords we are given. My Lord, you will see from this report that the company that we were relying on as a commission for this system is NTT in America. The servers were in Europe, but the company 
NTT is in America. And you know the time difference is eight hours. My Lord, can I have some peaceful environment to make my submissions? <laughs> you said who, who are in you? NTT, America. Yeah. They are the ones who are contracted by... Uh, sharp, sharp. Saffron. Saffron. And my Lord, the point is this. After giving the link, giving the access, because of the super security features in this system, it took time to access. In simple language, it's, it's, it's like Mutego uh, Wapanya uh, in a in a in a in a city park. As it used to be. You know, when you go to the door, you can't get to the center until you go around <laughs> all the parts. It takes time to get around the firewalls and access. And that was a challenge. And that was being set up by our service providers. So it took time, not us refusing. And my Lord, the fact that it took such a long time is evidence of the security features in the system which then <laughs> demolishes the suggestion that anybody could have hacked. And you will have the opportunity to study this report as to whether indeed you are experts themselves so in the evidence of hacking. So you cannot be asked my lords, to nullify a presidential election on the basis of allegations, on the basis of suspicions, my lord. No one is challenging the numbers, the votes. Those are not being challenged, my lord. What we are being told is this did not have a watermark, this did not. But you have not been told even now that the figures in any of Form 34B, that any of the figures in Forms 34A were wrong or cooked. You have them here. And even with the constraints of time, look, you, your staff, your registrar can go through them, my lord. And once you are satisfied about the figures, the sovereign will of the people of Kenya was captured in Forms 34A, Forms 34B, and Form 34C, my Lord, was completed. That was the one that was completed most transparently because everybody was able to follow the chairman of the commission signing that form in the presence of all the media. There's absolutely nothing wrong, no evidence. And the Lord, the fact that this court, as the registrar, to do that limited scrutiny in terms of time does not shift the burden of proof. When you retire to consider your judgment, you will ask yourself, I submit, whether, whether the petitioners have presented this court with any cogent evidence that these elections were rigged. By who, when, and how have you been presented with that evidence? All they've been talking about is this technicality and that technicality. My Lord, the results announced captured and represent the will of the Kenyan people. My Lord, it is a fact that the judgment 
of the Court of Appeal, which was given on the eve of the elections, presented certain challenges. For example, my Lord, the Chief Justice, kept asking those figures that we were seeing on the screen, what were they? My Lord, it's necessary to distinguish between the public portal and the screen. They are different, they are not the same. And therefore, the raw information in terms of how the people have voted is what was being beamed on the screen. And the Lord, following your Lordship's judgment, given that this judgment of the Court of Appeal came on the eve of the elections, the Commission will take steps to improve on how communication of the results should be, to harmonize the public photo and this screen, perhaps to wait for the form to be received instead of the results data being keyed in on this uh, KIMS and being transmitted and then being relayed immediately. Perhaps wait until form 34 is completed so that as you feed it into the public portal, which is not accessible by a majority of Kenyans, you also screen it so it can be picked up by the media so that the Kenyan people can be able to follow because they are entitled to follow. The commission was trying to comply with the Court of Appeal order that removed the issue of probational reports and at the same time respect the constitutional right of the Kenyan people to have information as quickly as possible. This is a petition that stands for dismissal. And as I sit down, this is one of the petitions that we ask you dismiss with the costs. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Mwite. Thank you, my lord. Yes, Mr. Ngati. Uh, thank you, my lord. Uh, my lord, within the time we've had, we do wish to discuss or submit and limit our su submissions to the first document and next year number four, the scrutiny of forms 34 bits. My lords, I start off with the constituency Kisauni is indicated as if the returning officer did not sign, but it was signed by the agents. Our comment on that is this. Please verify with the 34B that was submitted to the court because we have looked at a copy and the copy is signed by the returning officer. There could be errors in this document. But we, it's important the court to verify. And as the court is verifying, allow me to say this. The petitioner had 56,000 votes as compared to the third respondent who had 17,000 votes. And I don't think I need to say any, anything more. That is a constituency where it is the petitioner who had more votes than the third respondent. The next is Nyali. In Nyali, again, it's indicated re returning officer did not sign, but two agents, one of ODM and Jubilee, have signed. Once again, my lords, I request the court, before making any decision on it, to verify with the 34B that was submitted to the court. Where are you reading? Uh, scrutiny of form 34B. Schedule 4, Schedule 4. Schedule 4, okay. I am now at the middle of the page, <coughs> Mombasa, Nyali. And as regards Nyali, my lords, the person who garnered more votes is the petitioner at 41,000 against the third respondent with 19,000. Once again, I do not need to amplify any further if that vote was to be discounted, <coughs> whose prejudice that would be. And finally, Likoni, it would appear all this 
problems are in the, our coastal <coughs> town. In Likoni, it's again indicated as yeah. if returning officer did not sign, but eight agents, eight agents signed. In Likoni, my lords, petitioner got 38,000 votes as contrasted to the third respondent who managed 10,000 votes. Again, the consequence should be as clear as day follows night. My lords, apart from that, most other 34 Bs have been signed by returning officers and by the agents. A great majority of 291 34Bs have all been signed by returning officers and by the agents. What does that demonstrate? It demonstrates two things. First and foremost, my lords, the fallacy that many 34As were missing is untrue. All the 34As were used to generate 34Bs. And we know that because from the polling station, the 34As would go to the constituency for collation, verification, and compilation of 34B. Next point, my lords, we left this court with a fairly sensational submission that IBC took some time to go and now correct all these documents. Correct the documents so that they are all very well collected and well presented. That cannot be true because you see there are still some errors in the documents. So that sensational comment goes through the window. For third point, my lords, there is no allegation that the votes in 34A differ with the votes in 34B. There is no numerical difference. There are some instances, my lords, and I think we all need to see those instances, where due to certain difficulties, for example, Isiolo South, the 34B is not signed because the printer broke down. RO had to travel 150 kilometers to prepare that document. I am reading what the registrar has captured. The comment, why that form was not uh, filled by the agents, is because the printer broke down, and it's all indicated there. My lords, in our submission, this fortifies what we have said all along. Fortifies what we have said all along, that this was a fairly credible election within the parameters of conducting an election. My lords, I go to the IT, and before I go to the IT, my lords, the final comment on the scrutiny, there is no allegation that the vote announced at the polling station differs from the vote in 34A. So with all those, my lords, the only conclusion one can reach in my submission is that 34A as well as the 34B correctly reflects the votes cast in favor of all the presidential candidates. And I repeat here, my lords, 
that the on reforms, the on reforms 34 Bs, that on the face of this appear to have a problem, are actually where it is uh, our political <coughs> opponents who had more votes than the third respondent. So we would not wish those to be taken away because that to us is purely a clerical error. The, if the returning officer did not sign, it was a clerical error. But we tend to think that actually the returning officer must have signed for the agents to have signed. And we see in one of them, eight agents have signed. My lords, I go to the IT. The IT report has a few errors and we request the registrar in the fullness of time to compare this report with the handwritten notes that were done by our representative. Because in certain instances, what is here does not marry with what our representatives were requested to sign for. And they signed for each and every part of this report. I start off, my lords, at page seven. Page seven, letter H. And then towards the bottom of that page is court appointed IT experts. Documents submitted were not certified. My lords, the note our representative made is that the certificates were provided. Certificates were provided. On the next page, my lords, right on top, again is the expert uh, who was working on behalf of the registrar right on top. Again, there is a comment. Documents submitted were not certified. That is incorrect because the certificates were provided. And as a matter of fact, the annexures to this document are the report or the document that was signed by our experts. And they actually said on that, we have seen the certificates. The certificates have been provided. Maybe because of the hurry of doing this, there was no time to edit this report. My lords, at page 10, page 10, we start having a, bi a bigger problem. At the middle of the page, 3.14, our expert <coughs> uh, has instructed me that where it is indicated against the third respondent, that there was no comment, that is incorrect. The correct position is that our representative was satisfied that the soft copy fulfilled the order. So as against the no comment, the correct position is that our representative was satisfied that a soft copy fulfilled the order. And equally at the bottom of that page, the same position holds true that our representative has signed against the, the schedule that the, court, uh, the, uh, the registrar provided that we were satis satisfied with the order. I turn to page 12. Page 12, about the scanned and transmitted copies of forms 34A and 34B. And the comment I have from our technical team is that... My Lord, I was not allowed to, to put a document. Mr. Ngatian is now giving evidence. Well, Mr. Ngatian, my landlord friend, is now giving evidence of what his experts have said, told him. And is not part of the report. Uh, I don't think he can be allowed to do that. Uh, perhaps he, he, let can, me repeat. He, can, he can comment on it, uh, but he cannot... Uh, he cannot rebut the report on the basis of what he has been told, because that is not his duty as counsel to Perhaps, give evidence. Let me repeat, maybe all and clear to my learned senior. I say that there are annexures to this report. The annexure is a document that our representative has written, handwritten notes. It's, it's not here, my lord. We have a report which you have been given by the court. And that annexure must be strange. 
which we don't have. No, I, I, yeah. we don't have it. Maybe the judge yeah. could indicate. Maybe, maybe, maybe there's something happening somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Too suspicious. Finish off, Mr. Tangatia. Yes. I'll finish off, my lords, because I was coming to the conclusion at page 13, and our comment on the conclusion is that uh, the, there are three comments we'll make on that conclusion, because in one respect we differ with it. My lords, the first respondent, that is IABC, notified us, as well as the petitioner, that the read only access would be made available today at 5 p.m. Petitioner requested for admin rights at that meeting. That to us was beyond the order that was made by this court. Admin rights, my lord, is not something that parties were given. We were given read only access. We cannot expand the terms of the order because it becomes now suitable for one party to expand the terms of the order. The next one, my lords, is our disagreement with the sentence reading partial access became available after the meeting had been called. First responded had indicated if granted more time, first responded did not request for time. On the contrary, the person who requested for more time is the petitioner. My lords, apart from that, we have no difficulties with the other contents of this report. It is a fair report given this, the time and the urgency that the matter was had to be attended to. And once again, my lords, it is our submission that this report fortifies what we have said all along, that indeed this was a fair election where integrity of the vote was protected to the last, uh, as, as far as humanly possible. I conclude. The totality of this exercise, my lords, would establish beyond any argument that contrary to what has been a recurring theme about missing Form 34A, nothing like that ever happened, or the 34As have been accounted for to the last one. And they were accounted for at the right time at the constituency level. Once they were accounted for, they were captured in 34B, and the 34B is the forms that were used at the National Tallying Center for compilation of 34C. In those circumstances, my lords, there would be no ground in our submission for any challenge to the result that was announced. Thank you very much, my lords.